Welcome. My name is Daryl Miller, and I'm here with Lei. Hey, Daryl. Happy to be here. Nice to have you with us. And today we're going to talk about the Microsoft Graph Notifications API. So tell us, like, what is Microsoft Graph Notifications API? Yeah, of course. Uh, the Notifications API uh, really just enables your application to send and receive uh, mobile push notifications uh, via Microsoft Graph. And that really enables a user-centric notification experience for all your M365 users. So what do you mean by a user-centric experience? Uh, that's definitely worth explaining. So uh, traditionally, the whole notification story has been very device-centric, uh, which means when you try to send a notification to a user, you have to pretty much target uh, device-specific and platform-specific uh, mobile push technologies and do that for every single device endpoint that has the same user logged in. And uh, uh, over time, that became really a uh, developer burden and as well as additional cost when you're living in a multi-device uh, world and a cross-platform world. So uh, the notification API on Microsoft Graph help you to uh, remove that level of complexity and allow you to target users instead of devices. And also, it persists notification as a type of data resource inside uh, Microsoft Graph in the cloud, which means now notifications can be managed and uh, synced across different devices for a M365 user. So I don't have to have all five of my devices in the room all yelling at me for exactly the exactly. same reason. Exactly, hopefully not. That's excellent. So, so tell me the types of things that developers can do with this notifications API. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So notifications, well, to start off, uh, by definition, they are delivered in near real time. So they're really good for, uh, they're well suited for uh, communication type of scenarios and alert type of scenarios. And uh, also, uh, because notification have this unique ability to allow you to draw the user back to the app when your app is not running in the foreground. So uh, it's really good for uh, customer engagement as well as a user uh, retention type of scenarios. And uh, last but not the least, the notifications are, uh, especially on all the major platforms, are getting more and more interactive nowadays. So it's really good for productivity-related scenarios as well, because uh, the user can take action right within these notifications without having to switch context. That's, that's really cool. Could you maybe show us some more about these notifications? Yeah, sounds, sounds good. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so what you're seeing right here is basically our page under uh, graph.microsoft.com, and under Learn, you can find a Notifications API as a preview. And uh, getting started with Notification API is actually really easy. This is the overview for Notification API, and right below this page, we provide a step-by-step -step, uh, quick start guidance for you to jump right in. And uh, beside the standard uh, registration through Azure Portal, you need to onboard your application in Microsoft Partner Center as well, specifically to provide us with cross-platform application identifiers and uh, push credentials in order for Microsoft Graph to deliver push notifications on your behalf, on your app's behalf. And this is because of all the infrastructure with Google push notifications or Apple push notifications. It's that registration process. Precisely, yeah. And this okay. is very similar to what you have to do, uh, what you would do for any other third-party uh, push notification service as well. And uh, you can find very detailed instruction on, uh, on that in our docs page as well. So after onboarding is done, we can take a look at how your server and client components can integrate with the notifications API to leverage its capability. So there are three major steps, and we start off with uh, registration. This allows your application client uh, to uh, subscribe and receive push notifications for a logged-in M365 user. This usually happens when your app is launched and logged in by the user. Well, let's take a look under the hood and see how the code works. So right here you can see uh, the notification API currently has its own client SDK. You can check links in description to download the notification client SDK natively built for Windows, iOS, and Android. To register, you start off by constructing and initializing a connected device platform, which is the platform component that handles all notification-related things on the client side, including uh, syncing the notification feed between the client and the server, and many more. So if we look at the functional definition of this uh, uh, helper method, you can see that uh, platform.accountManager.addAccountAsync is called for the app to add the user account to the SDK. 
Once the user logs in with these credentials, this registers user's auth token with the platform. And this basically tells the platform that this is the user I want to receive notifications for. After that, you need to call a platform .notification registration manager register async. The application needs to register its native push channel with the connected device platform so it can send the signal down to the client via push regarding any notification data change in this push to pull model that we'll explain in a second. So we're opening a channel to that notification service. Precisely. And that's what allows us to receive notifications into our application. That's true. And uh, one thing that's worth noting here is uh, the client SDK actually enables many cross-device scenarios beyond mobile push notifications and support subscription model to other resource types. So don't forget to declare the user data feed scope here. In this case, we're only interested in receiving user notifications for this user, and it's declared as such. So those scopes, those work a little bit like the scopes that exist on Microsoft Graph when you're asking for different permissions. Too, exactly. Right? Okay. But this is just a different service that we're connecting to to receive those notifications. That's right. And the next step is publish. So this is your application server publishing a new notification, and the notification is therefore persisted in the user's notification feed inside the graph. This happens every time you need to send a notification to a user. So for server side, I want to show you our sample post API call in the Graph Explorer. Well, because it's a great tool to show the full body of the post API at a glance. In this call, raw content is the app-defined content that's going to be published to the graph and received later by the targeted user. So we're calling Microsoft Graph with the information about this notification that we want then to be transferred down to our end user's application. That's right. And uh, one thing that's worth noting is that in a typical real-world scenario, when your app server is trying to send a notification, it is usually not going to be directly logged in by the targeted user like it is on Graph Explorer because this is mostly for demonstration purpose. Instead, the server is expected to obtain authentication token either via a token-based app service authentication or via what's called a on behalf of flow. And uh, details for both paths can be found in the code samples we publish in the description below. And the last step is for the app client to receive and handle incoming notification updates. The Notifications API uses a push-to-pull model. You can see there's a lot of steps in here, but don't be intimidated. The end-to-end -end flow has detailed explanation inside our documentations page. At a very high level, the data payload you just saw in Graph Explorer is not sent down directly via mobile push service for Azure AD users. This provides additional enterprise compliance benefits. In this case, the initial signal is sent down to the application client via the native push service corresponding to the mobile platform the app is running on. Then, the app uses the client SDK to retrieve the full notification update and defines its own application logic to handle these notification updates accordingly. So, so these seven steps are the bits that we do for you so that you don't have to do exactly. this, right? Yeah. That's good. It's good to point out that that's the case. This is the pattern that's used for uh, receiving new notifications and uh, as well as uh, receiving any notification uh, status change or updates from other devices. Because in a multi-device world, the most important thing is for you to build a coherent notification uh, experience across all these different devices, where when a notification is dismissed or take action up on, on one device, it's also dismissed elsewhere. It's very important. For sure. <laughs> so let's take a look at how that works. Let me just use my little cheat sheet and uh, jump right to line 250. So you can see here, when a mobile push notification comes in, the app needs to call try parse and then platform.process notification async in order to ask the SDK to retrieve the new changes to the notification data feed in the graph. And then so we get a signal that a notification's happened, we get some data, we process and parse that data. Exactly. Then, That's where we process that data yep. and actually retrieve the, the real payload through a secure channel between the SDK and the server. 
And then we can see right here, uh, once the SDK completed the action uh, of, of syncing, this event callback, reader underscore data changed, will be fired. And this is the place your application handles all the app logic regarding incoming new notifications or notification status change. You can see from this helper, uh, read notification async. This app calls reader.readbatch async to read in all the changes and builds corresponding notification experience by constructing or removing local system visual notifications to be seen by the user based on the type of change received. Excellent. And that completes the experience. Cool. And can developers go and find this, this sample code somewhere? Yes, this sample code is uh, published uh, on GitHub. And uh, we have a link in description for you to uh, see more details. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for showing us this. It's really interesting. It's great that we have all this infrastructure to help people get through what is obviously not the simplest process in the world. And I look forward to getting far less notifications on my device. For sure. Notification is complicated to deal with, but hopefully uh, our tools makes that a little bit easier, especially for our M365 users. And so if users want to get started, they just go to graph.microsoft.com and go look up user notifications. Exactly. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. That was very interesting. It's great to see that we have all these tools to help people build these notifications. If people want to find out more about uh, Notifications API, go to graph.microsoft.com and look up user notifications.